When it comes to driving change in any organization, the most effective way to move from intention to action is through results-based leadership. For 20 years, the Annie E. Casey Foundation has used results-based leadership development to help leaders in the social and public sectors achieve better outcomes for children and families. Shared tools and resources can provide the framework for execution by defining a result, engaging partners to achieve the result, and holding yourself and others accountable by using data to assess progress. Accountability can be a challenge, but it doesn't have to be if you know the right strategies. Jolie Bain Pillsbury, a member of the Leadership Development Faculty at the Annie E. Casey Foundation, explains how a tool called the Accountability Pathway helps normalize tough conversations about commitments. It's hard to get things done all the time because with the very best of intentions, you'll make a commitment either at home or at work to get things done and then life gets in the way. And it's hard when you realize that you haven't been able to do it to be able to tell other people about it because you might feel embarrassed or ashamed. The important thing is though, you need to be able to have those conversations so that things can be accomplished and results produced. The accountability pathway is a very easy tool that's been designed to make it easier to have those conversations and have a common language so that people can accomplish results together. Why does accountability have such a negative association? Accountability is hard and makes people uncomfortable because when you have to tell somebody that you didn't get something done that you said you would do, you're going to feel uncomfortable. You might feel a little shame. You might feel anger. And the dilemma is that people will run away from that conversation because it's uncomfortable. Unfortunately, when you run away from those kinds of conversations, bad things can happen in the workplace. People can stop trusting each other. Problems don't get solved and results are not produced. The accountability pathway, however, can let you have those conversations in a more lighthearted, easier, and productive way. What's the best way to understand accountability? The best thing to understand about accountability is that it's developmental that you can develop the ability to understand where you are on the pathway, whether you're unaccountable or accountable. And based on understanding where you are, develop the ability to move from unaccountable to accountable. So you begin on the pathway by understanding, for example, perhaps that you completely forgot the commitment you made. And that's when you're unaware. But actually, it's pretty pleasant to be unaware because nothing's bothering you. But if then someone wakes you up and reminds you that you were supposed to do something, it's very, very easy to go to the very next step of the pathway and blame others. Well, I would have done it if you would have reminded me. But that's not really very good because that puts all the responsibility on somebody else and not you. So the minute people move beyond blaming others, a very natural place on the unaccountable part of the pathway is to say, I can't. I can't do it because I was too busy. I can't do it because my boss gave me something else to do. I can't do it because the computers were down. All of those things are true, but you're still being unaccountable because you're staying there and talking about why you can't. And very frequently, people will move from that to something that is comfortable again, and they wait and hope and they hope that some miracle will occur overnight and someone else will write that report for their boss. But sadly enough, that doesn't happen. How can you change unaccountable actions to accountable ones? The way you move from unaccountable to accountable is to take a very important step and acknowledge your own reality to actually look around and see what is in the way of you getting things done. And once you see your own reality, the most important thing that you do next is to take the step of owning an action commitment. Is it still important to you and will you do it? If you decide that it is no longer important or you can't do it, owning an action commitment can mean that you will go tell somebody that you're not doing it. Even though that is uncomfortable, it is so crucial because if someone is depending on getting this done and it doesn't happen, it can cause real problems in the workplace. So you either say, I am going to do it and move to find solutions, or you say you're not. 
When you move to find solutions, you have that commitment that you will figure it out, that you will notice what is true in your own reality and find the way to move towards making it happen. When you make it happen, that's a very satisfying place to be because even though it's hard, you're actually working to make things different and better for kids and families. How can you use the accountability pathway? Well, it's actually very easy to use the accountability pathway, but the first thing you have to do is you have to have it in your hand and in front of your eyes. It has to be visual, something you can see. And the thousands of people have used these bookmarks across the country, and what they use them for is they think about the action commitments they've made, and then they look at the pathway and they notice at what step are they on that pathway? Have they forgotten something that they committed to do? Then they ask themselves, what got me to this step and what will help me move forward? And once they've had that awareness and understand where they are, the most important thing is they then have a conversation with a peer or a boss and the pathway helps them have that conversation in a more comfortable way so you can start solving those problems and moving forward together. It's important to remember that this is nonlinear. Even when you're making it happen one day, the very next day you might forget that you committed to do something and you're back in unaware. But having this uh, pathway allows you to then decide how you're going to move back into making it happen. What are the key takeaways from the accountability pathway? Accountability is developmental. You can be at different stages along the pathway, at work, with your family, or in your community. Discussing accountability feels uncomfortable. However, you can explore the sources of your discomfort and use those insights to become better at making and keeping commitments. Using the accountability pathway can minimize frustration when you struggle to keep commitments. The process can lead to discoveries about how to make and keep commitments that move you from talk to actions and produce results that make things better for you and others. The accountability pathway is even more powerful when whole teams or organizations use it together. This can be so easy. You just put the pathway on a poster or a banner in your offices and all of a sudden people have a common language that's right in front of their eyes to have those important and sometimes difficult conversations. Let's say a group of you actually forgot that you were supposed to get something done. You can stand together on the unaware step and figure out why you forgot and what you can do to help each other remember the commitments you've made. Or let's say a group of you got something done that day. You can not only celebrate and stand together at the make it happen part of the pathway, you can also think about what helped us make it happen? What are those key lessons? Can we all learn from this and make it easier for our whole organization to develop a culture of accountability that predictably gets important results? For more information about the accountability pathway and other tools for results-based leadership, visit AECF.org.